call the meeting to order from the May Human Rights Commission meeting. Uh, roll call, Commissioner Pandya. Present. Commissioner Johns, absent. Commissioner Kolash, present. Commissioner Kadura. Present. Commissioner Abdullahi. I don't see him on Zoom yet. Not on Zoom yet? Okay. No, I don't see him. Right. Commissioner Priest. Here. Lusala. Here. Paul Schantz. Here. Mendez Shannon. Here. Great. Okay. Um, great. Then before we move on, um, one quick little item that isn't on quite on the agenda here, but we do have um, one of the recipients from our human Youth Human Rights Awards from last week who was unable to attend, who has joined us this evening. Um, so I want to reread the um, description and reason for the award, and then we'll present that to her here before we, before we awesome. move on. Awesome. All right. So we have with us Kalia Seaton, uh, who, along with her friend Penelope Wilmoth, organized City Students for Palestine, organizing and leading protests and walkouts in support of Palestine. They held educational meetings, crafted daily Instagram posts, made signs and raised awareness, all with the purpose and hope of ending genocide. So thank you, Kalia, and I've got your award here if you want to come up and get that. Hey, do we have a volunteer to read the land acknowledgement? I can. Right. Thank you. Uh, we meet today in the community of Iowa City, which now occupies the homeland of the Native American nations to whom we owe our commitment and dedication. The area of Iowa City was within the homeland of the Iowa Misquaki and Sauk, and because history is complex and time goes far back beyond memory, we also acknowledge the ancient connection of many other indigenous people here. The history of broken treaties and forced removal that dispossess indigenous people of their homeland was and is act of colonization and genocide that we cannot erase. We implore the Iowa City community to commit to understanding and addressing these injustices as we work toward equity, restoration, and reparation. Thank you. Okay, great, and Idris has joined us on Zoom. Great, item number three, approval of the April 23rd, 2024 meeting minutes. So move. All right. Moved by Priest. I second. Seconded by Mendez Shannon. All in favor of approval of the minutes? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Right. Minutes are approved. Agenda item four, public comment on items not on the agenda. Commentators shall address the commission for no more than five minutes. Commissioners shall not engage in discussion with the public or one another concerning said items. Do we have anyone wishing to comment tonight? Yeah, go ahead and step forward to the podium there. Tell us your name, where you're from. I'm mainly, mainly here. I'm mainly here on the transportation issue. But since I see this item on the agenda, I've been uh, planning to comment for quite a while, and that's on the uh, excess muffler noise that goes on, especially in the downtown area. Rapid acceleration and uh, people driving around and around and where there's a lot of residents. And there used to be uh, enforcement. Uh, they used to issue tickets on this, and I'm sure there are ordinances, but there probably hasn't been any tickets issued for a long time. And I think if they just issue a few tickets, People have to change their mufflers. Well, that's it. Thank you. Can you just give your name for the meeting? Uh, minutes, George, Trez George Tresnek, uh, 1245 Michelle Court, but I spend most of my time in the pet mall at my brother's condo. Thank you. Thank you. Other public comment? Okay, moving on. Item five, correspondence. Stephanie, I didn't see anything in the packet. Anything there. else? I don't think so. Nope. No. Okay. 
Then item six, updates on outreach and engagement by the police department. Hello everyone, good to see you. Um, so tomorrow actually we have our intern starting for the outreach department. Her name is Perla Hernandez. Um, she'll be here probably for the remainder of the summer. Um, I would hope that she would be getting to be introduced to you guys at some type of meeting. Kind of depends on her schedule and whether or not she'll be flexible in order to do that. But she'll be helping us with EMS camp, safety village, um, encampments. She'll be helping with the animal service. Um, so, I mean, she kind of gets a large perspective in terms of what all is in public safety realm. Um, so she starts tomorrow, like I said, and then Friday, I believe, she'll be with animal services for the day. So that's exciting. Um, it's my first um, intern that I've actually went through that process with, so it'll be a good learning curve. Um, with the warmer weather, we've been noticing that there are more encampments. We've been getting more involved with those. We were in that realm during the winter time, uh, but now that it's getting warmer and there's more in house that are living outside, we're trying to provide them more services and work with the shelter house hand in hand. So we've been ramping up with that. Um, I believe Mark, you last time we mentioned with the coat drive, which was like very early on the CRC, and we actually did get in contact with them and we're working with them for their winter Thank coat you, drive. That. So well uh, very good contact there, it was awesome. Um, so we've already started with them. Uh, we've had, I believe, two meetings now, and then we have a follow-up meeting to solidify where we're going to be having it. Um, yeah, where's be, the trick? What's that? Finding a place is going to be a yeah. trick. Yeah. We have, there's a, a church off of Muscatine, I think it's River Community. Yeah. That's where we're thinking of because the chaplain for the police department, um, mm -hmm. he, he works it's with really us, good. so he's pretty much opening it up. We're going to go there and, and see it first, but that's probably a pretty good location for it because it's for not far from the rest of the commissioners, her. it's kind of across the street from Gay Chia. Yep. You know, yes. Yeah. River uh, Community Church. Yep, River Community. So we've been, we've been uh, going on with that early because it's a big project, but it's going to make it easier for the city to be involved in it rather than Thank take you. all of it under our wing. So awesome recommendation there. Uh, as I mentioned, Safety Village is coming up here soon. That's June 18th to, to June 28th. I don't know whether or not the openings for that are still open or not. I don't know if they're still doing enrollment, um, but that's again, 18th to the 28th. Kevin and I will be at that every single day from morning until the evening when it's so. Uh, let's see, oh, EMS camp. That is July 8th and 9th, and then 11th and 12th. Uh, that, I'm pretty positive, still has spots left open, so if you can register for that or have someone or you know that somebody you have, you have in mind, that'd be a good thing, because I think that registration's wrapping up fairly soon, and I'm pretty sure we still have a couple spots in there, so. Age level? Um, so the 8th and 9th of July is freshmen's, Freshmen and sophomores, okay. current freshmen and sophomores. And then the 11th and the 12th is current seniors. I think, because I think, Roger, you had a question on whether or not current seniors yes. that are going into college would mm -hmm. be eligible. And if I remember from our meeting with the fire department, it, it, that's not the case. So okay. it would have to be incoming juniors and incoming seniors. Okay. Um, and I'm pretty sure it says that on the registration, so there should not be any confusion, um, but I did get that question answered as well. Uh, we've been working with the Kiwanis Noon Club. We did a presentation with them over fraud, scams, um, and that, that kind of stuff because uh, it's important to, to make sure that they're in the loop. And then we have a couple of squad tours coming up, so we'll go out to certain locations that have requested it, give them a tour of the squad, do a little bit of like a reading or something like that outside of it, get them acclimated with the actual, the car and seeing someone in a uniform because that can be scary. Uh, and then last but certainly not least, on the 15th of June, we will be at the Pride Parade, so. Any questions? Busy guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Great, thank you, Trey. You're welcome. You guys have a good day. Mm -hmm. Thanks, you too. <coughs> Item seven, support for a community transportation commission. 
And I believe we all have a copy of a draft re resolution. So this would be a draft resolution for city council. Um, go ahead and read through it, if that makes sense. Or Stephanie, what were you? <laughs> you want to give a little context? I, I, yeah. Well, I think the resolution can be used you know, to ask questions or to have a discussion, but in terms of if the city council, they, they in the resolution would be created and worded by somebody else. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so I think you can just use the resolution to start a conversation. Okay. All right. So, yeah, go ahead and give everyone a minute here to kind of read through this and then questions. You know, I was reading it and I was kind of thinking, you know, we have a, a, a commission that obviously housing and, and, and development. I was just surprised that we did not have a oversight body for transit. Transit. Because mm -hmm. we have the police review board and we have the, the housing and, and the neighborhood. And I was just surprised that we did not have a transit mm -hmm. commission. So, of course, I'll, I'll support it. <clears throat> Oops. Stephanie, do we know where, where this resolution, this draft oh. came from? Do we have? Do yeah, there yeah, should be representatives invite, yeah, here in the audience who can someone yes. come up to introduce this. This would be fantastic. Yeah. Sorry, I forgot to add that to the handout. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeremy Ensley. Um, director of the Community Transportation Committee. Yeah. And thank you for all the videos, um, by the way, that you've been doing about um, boards and commissions. They're really, it's been awesome. Mm. Yeah. Good. Well, you're welcome. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about the resolution, kind of how you how it came to be, and you know the sure yeah the reasoning I behind it. Prepared something to okay. Um, so over the past several months, um, CTC has been engaging with bus riders, um, nonprofit leaders, and employers about public transit, our public transit system. And um, we've encountered surprise and disbelief that Iowa City currently has no formal transit advisory commission um, where riders and other stakeholders can be voting members. Um, public transit is a vehicle for freedom, employment, education, and full participation in civic life for many. Um, yet the voices of those reliant on our bus system have been missing from funding decisions, um, route planning, and other policies that shape their daily lives. Um, we feel that establishing a transit advisory commission um, is not just about transparency and accountability, it's about empowering bus riders and pr promoting equity. Um, it's about giving them a platform to voice their concerns and to contribute to decision-making processes through open public meetings. Um, and we feel that it will be a first step towards forming a comprehensive regional transit authority. Um, and this would fill the current gap where the regional transportation planning organization um, oversees transit policy, but lacks uh, provision for bus riders themselves to be voting members. Um, and adopting this resolution would be a first step towards social and ec economic justice in mobility. Um, so we just want to urge you um, to send this to the city council to start a conversation about the transit commission. Thanks. Yeah. Comments? So are you depending on us to s bring this to the council's attention or is it already to the council's attention? Um, we have um, a couple of supporters on the council. Um, but we supported, we approached the um, Human Rights Commission initially um, mm -hmm. because um, we weren't getting a response from the city council. Okay. Other commissioner questions or comments? I am in interested in just, um, I guess, a detailed idea of when you mention that the commission would enhance the participation and diversity, equity, and inclusion. I, I, I love that. Um, I definitely think that it'd be helpful to understand 
what that means in terms of the transit uh, support. Definitely accessibility, and I understand that. Um, equity is a bit also also clear, and I know that some of the points here uh, explain that a little bit, but yes. I th it, w it would be great to have that be more of the focus from when I'm seeing it. In terms of like how it's written? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, currently um, there's no um, board or commission um, that any uh, writer can be on um, to have part, uh, take part in the decision making process. Um, so um, we feel that's missing, like housing was mentioned um, that has a commission. Um, there are many other boards and commissions, and this is a gap that we feel should be filled. So, um, and this would allow anyone in the committee, in the community, to get on the commission. So, and and when you're talking about decision making mm -hmm. process, you talking about making a recommendation to the council, right? Because all board and commission. Um, what we do is make a recommendation to the council and the council pretty much has the final voting power. Okay. Yeah, I mean, transportation um, is a complicated um, service. It's very expensive. Um, the programs are very expensive. So um, some, of the, um, some of the recommendations might be on a direction that they would take, yeah. um, or particular um, services they might implement. Um, and other larger decisions might not be put in the hands of the, com the commission, but, um, but each commission also, and I don't know if the transit commission would get its own budget, um, might be able to create new programs that don't exist currently um, that would um, serve needs in the community. Um, that's something that we would certainly be hoping for. So primarily, the, when I think about it, it's a matter of routes mm -hmm. and timing, um, and, that you'd, and how many, those are the kinds of things you'd like to influence when you talk about programs. Um, service area, mm -hmm. um, yeah, right now there's a, um, underway at the county level, there's a door-to-door um, -door program that's getting started oh. um, that th this transit commission could help support um, and there's, um, there was a transit uh, study done a couple of years ago that had a number of different ideas um, put forth, and so far we haven't seen any action on any of those. I see. Yeah. Well, I know when the, um, the transportation study and bus study was done, and I think some th the result of some of the, some routes actually were eliminated. And yes. uh, and uh, and I know some of the buses that used to go through the, you know, inside street, most of the route just became, you know, in main main mm -hmm. street, which which was frustrating for a bit because I know at at that time I was managing one of the organizations that serve people with disabilities, and it became even more. Um, it became an obstacle because right. some people that used to just come out on Cam Camden Road to get their bus, now they had to walk all the way to uh, Scott Boulevard or Court, which I know there was a survey that was sent out, and I think most of us, uh, you know, fill out that survey encouraging possibly a Sunday route, and right. uh, that still haven't come to fruition. So. Uh, those are just a few things that I think that will help the community because most of the people that either benefit from the bus system, um, they either work those jobs that are now closed on Sunday mm. and uh, even in routes. So it's uh, something just to keep in mind as you're proposing this. I definitely will you know, support some idea of having a transit committee uh, that works with the staff reviewing routes and uh, fares. I know we, you know, we are on a, what, two years free, free busing system because of the grants that the city got, so how can we prolong something like that? So I think it's a good idea. As a member of the building bridges and someone who was dependent on the bus for two and a half years yeah. without any car, 
I am personally very, very invested in this. Um, and I don't know what you, Doug and Kelsey, think, but I, I would want to support that and maybe um, take take it up to city council as part of our team. Like, And I'm happy to take a lead or have you guys involved if you think it's a good idea. I mean, I, I on the subcommittee, I think that's a great idea. Um, and then I, I do just have a couple of questions, just very basic. Like, um, I was curious, you know, I, I was in the, in our current city strategic plan through 2028, the mobility section, it does include um, not just transit services, but also cycling mm. and imp improving bike lanes. And I noticed that that's not a focus of the Transit Advisory Commission, even by name. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so I can see why you might be focusing, but I just wondered if, if that was something that had been discussed or how you might be considering that. And then my second question, I'm gonna hit you with two at once, if that's okay. Um, the last time your group came to speak to us, I had a question about if you had connected with um, Kelly Schneider, who's the county mm -hmm. mobility coordinator, and so if there were any updates on that um, and the coordination. You mentioned already some of the county initiatives, so I just was curious to hear a bit more. Yeah. yeah. So um, because people are getting off work really late at night and um, um, because uh, public transit has been our focus. Um, we didn't really include biking, but mm -hmm. I think it would be great to include that. Um, and it's something that I think the um, Iowa City, personally, I think Iowa City could benefit from more bike lanes, um, like demarcated bar bike lanes. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there's tons of other organizations, bike biking enthusiast organizations that would jump mm -hmm. on um, biking being included in the purview of the transit committee. Um, yeah, so I think that's a great idea. Um, and as far as Kelly um, Schneider, yeah, I'm in communication with Kelly. Um, I've worked with her a lot over the years, actually. Um, and we're helping, right now we're helping her um, research um, employers um, okay. in Coralville and North Liberty, um, doing some outreach. She does most of that, but we, we do some surveys um, to yeah. try to find out um, some background on what employers need and things Great. like that. So. Excellent. So on the on the bike lanes, um, yep. if you're not already connected, I think Audrey with the bike library mm -hmm. would be a great person to connect with. She was a recipient sure. of uh, one of our human rights awards uh, a couple of years ago, okay. um, and her work in the community is great, uh, and, yep. and she's very uh, reachable too. So if you need a connection, just let me know. Okay, great. And we hope that um, when the commission is established that this is going to open it up for the entire community to be on. So mm -hmm. it's not just, you know, our, our organization, it'll be open to everyone. So. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Other questions, comments from commissioners? <coughs> I think maybe you? just a recommendation that as you're embarking on something like this, also just keep pushing the idea of connecting um, our transit system with other municipality, Coralville, North Liberty. You, yeah. The city is blending. You know, if you go to Tiffin, it's pretty much right there, North Liberty. So Coralville, Iowa City. So how can we connect a lot of those? Because if we're talking transit, how, how far can we take it? So the agenda item is <coughs> support for community trend. Do you want a resolution? We've already offered that before. Yeah, I think we have, you know, when they came to speak before, yeah. we, we, I think, unanimously said we, we kind of gave a vote of support. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, my th thought here would be to assign this to the Building Bridges com Committee and work on pushing this to City Council. You got it. That's a great idea. Is that? All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Do we need to vote on, the, on that, or are we just can I, I so. just assign that to? I the think commission? we just assign. Right. We don't okay. need to vote. So All building right. bridges, take it on and <coughs> take it to city council. Okay. <laughs> right. Yeah. So we'll assign this then to our building bridges committee and work on a connection to city council there. Other yeah. Other comments on on this from the public? Looks like we've got one here. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for your work on this. It's yes, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Sir, did you have another comment? George? George, did you have another? Did you have another comment? No, I just got yep. my. Okay. My all right. Okay. Great. Great. <laughs> okay. I didn't then, have a pen with me. <laughs> all right. Thank you. All right. So we'll move on to agenda item eight: our human rights awards. Uh, this is a save the date for the commissioners. Our human rights awards will be Wednesday, October twenty third, twenty twenty four, and this is the breakfast one. Right. Yes. So, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And it will be at the um, the, nor the usual place. The usual, the view. Yeah. Okay. This is upstairs. Upstairs, yeah, on the and rooftop. Mm -hmm. When you say breakfast, are you talking 7 a.m. or 9 a.m.? Yeah, it's 7 a.m. Oh, 7 a.m. 7 7 7 7 yeah, we usually have to, have <laughs> to be, be there to work by, like by 6, 9. We have to be there by 6 30. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when the buses don't run. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But we usually don't buy 8. Uh, usually, yeah, it usually goes pretty quickly. Yes. Yeah, and the breakfast is great. So, yeah. mm -hmm. you know when the uh, the uh, nomination start going up, or is already the the applications on the website now. So oh. we haven't okay. actually started advertising, but somebody can um, submit any time. Mm -hmm. All right, great. Okay, and we'll move on to number nine: our commission committees, um, starting with building bridges. Uh, bridges between our commission and other government entities and areas in the community. And I think we've talked tonight already um, about the resolution for the Transit Advisory Commission. Um, and then we're working on a couple other items um, to recommend to City Council as well. So we'll, you know, we haven't had an official meeting meeting, but we've been communicating about those things and we'll we'll have, hopefully have something by next meeting along those lines. John V or Kelsey, anything else to add there? No, I think you covered it well. Okay, all right. Then our Reciprocal Relationships Committee. Do you uh, have an update there? That is me and uh, Commissioner Priest. Uh, we actually met uh, and uh, discussed the idea that we talked about last time here, reaching out to some of the organization that did not get the funding and we're not talking about creating more work to them we just you know just wanted to reach out and uh, acknowledge them and ask them if they had any question or anything like that so um, Mark and I kind of divided the group and uh, we'll make some phone calls just connected we just started by who do you know <laughs> on those <laughs> organizations because it will be an easy seamless call to call somebody that you know and those organizations say hey we know you did not get the grant and, uh, you know, what's going on with your organization, how's things going, and do you have any question for us? That's it. So that's going to start with the basic steps. So Mark, uh, got pretty much most of, I think you got like 12 organization, and I have like seven. So I know a lot of people. So Mark <laughs> knows a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Well, and I appreciated Kelsey's concern about time. Yeah. It's not only ours, but theirs. And so a lot of these folks, because I know them, um, I'm in conversation with them anyway. So this yeah. would simply be an added topic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we'll have some stuff to report next month after we talk to one or two or three. So we'll see it where that goes. I think raised mm -hmm. hand. Yeah. E, I see your hand up. Yeah. Um, I just kind of, uh, I just kind of wanted to state while we're still on this topic. Uh, I haven't really chosen my subcommittee yet, but I did want to state that I want um, I'm I wanted to I gained interest for the reciprocal relations uh, subcommittee, and I kind of wanted to uh, I wanted I wanted to continue working with them. You're on it. You are well. Welcome <laughs> aboard. That was just what I was going to talk about next. <laughs> next, uh, we still have uh, uh, two commissioner, which is uh, uh, Idris and. Uh, Sylvia, that are not officially on any subcommittee yet. So, and there was still two that had two members. So, I just welcome aboard. Now we know we have three, so we will include you on our invite for the next uh, meeting. I appreciate that. I look forward to it. Sorry, E. Um, I'm glad you'll be a part of that committee. Um, could I just ask your group one question? Sure. Because I was trying to remember when I was reading through the minutes from our last meeting, 
I was getting a little bit confused because in our minutes it says that we agreed to revisit this proposal to reach out to everybody at a later meeting and that in order to allow us to come to a final decision on whether we'd reach out. But then I wasn't sure. I mean, that, that's in the minutes we approved. So I, that, but then I was getting a little bit con um, confused in my own head of like where we did actually leave it. Um, just to say today, um, you know, I support you leaning on the relationships you already have to check in with folks um, and make any clarifying questions. I think that's a great approach in what you've described. Yeah. No issues there. Um, I just wanted to note that my memory wasn't following with our, our minutes in this case, and I couldn't remember then where we did land. I, th I think... Um what we felt last time when we were bringing this conversation, I think it was more of everybody's time. I think um, some people that were involving everybody to make those calls and things like that. So we just wanted to maybe focus on our commission, committees, just making some initial call. If we need to do something more as an organization and as a commission, then we can mm. definitely keep having discussion and have something concrete. But this was just going to be contacts. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, in the minutes also said that Liz, your committee is also thinking about doing this. Yes. Yeah, so we won't yeah. trip over each other. So just to clarify, the note about time that I made last time was actually about their time, not our time. We're so um, that I mean, but otherwise, fully with you, Roger. Um, and I, again, fully support the proposal as you shared it today. Thank you okay. for taking that on. And if your committee is also working on this. Um, Liz and Viana, I hope Yeah, we didn't know where you guys yeah. were standing. <laughs> you are reaching out to folks who did not yes. receive the grant, right? We're going to go the other way, too. So oh, we'll okay. We'll be able to okay. a full circle there. <laughs> awesome. Fantastic. Good, good, good. Look at that. Great case. <laughs> mm -hmm. right. Anything else from Breaking Bread? Oh, yes. Then? Yeah. Did you want to respond? Mm -hmm. Sure. So we were thinking yeah, ex 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 exactly that. How do we support sort of the full of where we are with our uh, with the folks who received uh, the grant and those who you know did not. So uh, two prong, we want to do a listening tour um, because our our goal is to really be able to speak to folks and to learn what their needs are, so that we understand how they see where they're having that tension, where they may. Um, be open to what are their rights, where's the feeling of not being, you know, not having a voice. We're thinking, let's do something like a listening tour, and we're going to do it in uh, two ways, because we have so much time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we are going, we'll speak to, to Stephanie about this as well, maybe having two Fridays in June where we want to invite the, the community to meet us and, and we want to talk about our mission, but also do an open invite to the folks that received our grant in a timely fashion where we ask those uh, two questions, which are, you know, how can we deepen their interaction with the commission and how can we support their feelings and having a voice at the table? So we suspect that we'll get lots of information and feedback and maybe have some overarching ideas that we're able to share with the commission and the community. Yeah. One of the things that Roger and I realized is we're going to need to review their applications so we're familiar with their project and the same I'd encourage you. Yes. And then I think the quarterly report form will help you. Yeah. Yes, I think it will help yeah. too. For those that receive the, yeah. the yeah. grant. Yeah. Yeah. I, think that, yeah. I don't think it will. I think it oh. just has the organization name. I don't think it has contact information. But I would I still encourage you to, to read the application. The reason we're reading the application, so we, we are familiar when we're having that you know, conversation. And, and another reason also why you know, we kind of look into the people we know on those groups. You know, we, we know there was some tension of some people that did not get the grant. Yeah. So it will be a good familiar voices <laughs> reaching out to just check in. Sure. So hopefully we can start. I think more of it is a listening ear. Yeah, yeah. listening ear. Yeah. So. so we, we uh, just in our own experience, we, uh, we, we think that, you know, it, it might be a way to bring upon an event. It might be a way to think about maybe a tool that is available online, something that we can offer as a way, as a response to what we hear. Yes, so, so we said we need Stephanie's help to guide us through this. Uh, <laughs> like, you know, we're thinking maybe we can use the Iowa City Library to 
you know, if if we do like, you know, if our first initial, you know, invitation for people to walk through and to ask us questions, to listen to them, um, you know, to just to, to be present there and just to show them that we are there. And I think we're gonna do the second Friday too over there. So, yes. so they will know if they did not get a chance to speak to us the first Friday, they can come back on the second Friday. So I don't know if this like need um, so much free arrangements or, you know, permission or. Is it just for the general public or for grant recipients? This is for, for general for public. For general public, okay. the first okay. one, yeah. Okay. Okay. So it would just really be seen when the library had availability on a Friday. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's, it's hard to expect, you know, if people are going to be willing to stop by and speak to us or anything, you know, it's just the first try to do such a thing. So it's like going through phases. We'll try the first phase, then we'll see what, you know, what's going to bring us, and then we'll try to build on that. The, the only thing, and uh, we have to just make sure how many commissioners are we going to have Yeah, there shouldn't present. be more than okay. four. Because if you have more than four, then it yeah. becomes... Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then they have to follow the evaluation mm -hmm. open. Mm -hmm. So you have to okay. be three or less. Got it. <laughs> Got it. And, and Four or less. Hold events like that. It's important to talk about what the commission does versus what the office does because yes. we have this human rights attached to our name and we're yes. really a civil rights enforcement agency. Okay. So yeah. you will find that a lot of people certainly do have human rights concerns, issues, things that are happening to them that should not be. However, mm -hmm. our office is very limited to what, you know, we can do and what we can't. Yeah. And what happens sometimes is if somebody sends them, oh, you should go talk to Stephanie. They come to talk to <laughs> me and I'm like, I, you know, mm -hmm. I can try to get them in the best possible referral that is appropriate for the situation. But I, I just want to make sure that hopes aren't given to people that there's something the office can do for them yeah. that's outside of what our enforcement is. Mm -hmm. We certainly, you know, um, can try to get them, um, like I said, referred to agencies, organizations, people, attorneys that we think can assist them, but just making sure that there, there's not this grand hope that, you know, we'll be able to, um, you know, fix a human rights issue that is outside of what the code allows us to enforce, so. And as Dr. Liz said, you know, this is like a listening tour, so it's gonna be made clear that, you know, we are there to, to hear them. So it's like, you know, to it, acknowledge, it, you know. Yeah, the, you the, know. and the commission's power is much broader than the office's right. So, I mean, you, you certainly, you know, can take stances, do programming, bring attention, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But it's just the enforcement part of the office. Yeah. That's always yeah. kind of the delicate balance sure. with people's hopes and expectations. And I think you might need to kind of wriggle around because it looks like you lost your lights. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, can I read? I just <laughs> was had, a, had one question, maybe comment. Yes. So I think we're going to get ahead to the vendor opportunities in a second, but those <laughs> dates I think are June 15th and June 19th. So okay. when you're talking about yeah. two Fridays, <laughs> yes. um, that is a really busy oh, week. Yeah. <laughs> but the other thing is that I really like the questions that you raised, um, that you developed. And I think actually if when we get to that vendor discussion, I think when we engage in conversations at our tables, actually right. leading with some of those questions or mm -hmm. a form of them might be really interesting. So, great, you yeah. know, describing mm -hmm. the commission, making it clear also in context of what Stephanie just shared, what we're, what we do and what we, what the office does and just make that distinction. But then also this idea of like, what is it that we can do to be a better voice for mm -hmm. you? Um, and the connections that you can have in the, com in, with the Human Rights Commission too, I think could be a really interesting prompt for whoever, whoever is tabling. Thank you. Maybe among, uh, didn't we in the past had some kind of flyers that had what the commission uh, duties are, and what is the office of equities? Mm -hmm. What would they look I don't, into? I don't. I don't. I know currently we have an office brochure, but certainly, I mean, getting a commission brochure is certainly something that is doable. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah. So, I mean, who's ever uh, just? I mean, reach out to me, and we can mm -hmm. um, do our best to try to have. Um, you know, a brochure for you for those days. Yeah, okay. I think I think it would just be a good visual to say, hey, this is what the commission would focus on, and this is what the office of the equity and civil mm -hmm. rights addresses. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, that's a great point. I looked through the big binder that I received at the beginning to yeah. spot if we have that, you know, uh, stated, you know, uh, no, over there, but it was nothing. There was nothing. Well, I know on our website we have our duties. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. But, yes, yeah. you know, the office addresses, mm -hmm. that's part of now us. <laughs> cool. I like that. Great. I like that. Idea. <coughs> Thank you for all the updates. Excellent. Agenda item number 10. Vendor opportunities, um, and these, I, I did double check the dates, I think, and it looks like they are back to back. Yep. Yeah, Just so check. Juneteenth is Friday night, June 14th, from 4 to 10 p.m., and Pride is Saturday, June 15th. So I don't know who on the city is responsible for doing the turnover between those two, but I don't envy them. Um, Yes, Roger, you look like <laughs> you have something I you know, want to say there. <laughs> I know in the past when we staffed some of those uh, booths, we didn't go the whole thing. Right. So mm -hmm. I think, you know, so you say Juneteenth is uh, 4 to 10. Four to the 10. activities mm -hmm. goes 4 to 10. Yeah. But I mm -hmm. think in the past when uh, I think Janvier and I did them, I think we only went to like like four to two six. Hours. So it was two hours just for the the, the vendor's booth. But the activity, of course, are uh, endless. And I think also a couple of years ago when I also staffed the Pride, we had, the, it was like, uh, that was many more hours because I know we had a couple of shift. So, but, you know, both of those, I have participated in both of them. They're both great event. I think uh, the Juneteenth last year, we had the most turnout. We had John V and Bijou, and John V's brother was there with the guitar and playing music. If you guys don't know, John V sings. That was attracting more people. And uh, Stephanie always gets the best swag. So we actually had people from different booths <laughs> coming to our per for yeah. the swag. So uh, I can do both, but I can volunteer probably to help with. Uh, Juneteenth. Uh, yeah. And Pride, just if we're talking about time, starts at noon. Mm -hmm. um, and again, to your point, it goes until like 10 p.m. But yeah. most of the vendors, I think, are done by 5 or 6. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm. I can do Juneteenth. I'm spread too thin for Pride in three different places besides this one. Yeah. You can mm -hmm. prioritize. If this is my priority, I can do that. Um, my church and my subcommittee that won't be very happy. <laughs> I'm out of town on the 14th, but I could help with tabling on the 15th for Pride. One of the things I do at Pride is when there are people with a speaker and a microphone speaking ill from a religious perspective, I go talk to them. Can we get Mark a megaphone and just have it like we can put our table right, <laughs> right next right. to those? <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. um, all right, so we have what Mark and Roger, you said Juneteenth. What date yeah. is that one again? The it's Friday, Friday the 14th. Friday the 14th. Okay. Friday 14th. And you said four to six? Um, yeah, and I actually think it's e it, they'll pack you up probably before six because there's some events that start right at six, so you'll probably be packed up before it. And it's on the. Um, Oh, I think they call it the... Um, Red Mall? Yeah, but it's more... There's another name for the... It's the one that, to me, is um, intersects with Dubuque Street. So it's not the traditional... It's not the splash pad. Correct, correct. Near Revival. Well, yeah. Is that where it is, splash pad? Well, it's it like... Last the, year it was in that little... Yeah, hallway. I think they call it Black Hawk Park, maybe, is what okay. they call it. Something like that. Okay. Yeah. But it's, it's part of the Ped Mall, but it's not like... The traditional it's main not part. where the stage is Correct. it's not by the library but it's yeah. you know between the stage and the Froyo revival yeah kind of in front of the Froyo <laughs> and all that stuff okay all right that's where and they don't supply tables or chairs so I'll have to make arrangements to get you the tables and the table from the office and chairs yeah I, I highly encourage that. I'm just out that, out of country that week for a conference. So. Yeah. 
It's we had a lot of fun last year. I know. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> I can volunteer to pick up the table and chair I did that last year and drop it off. Thank you. Yeah. In that cart you have? <laughs> yeah, I have a little cart that I pull everything. Do you? Yeah. Oh, nice. Not mine. It's my <laughs> wife. <but Yeah. laughs> she's the most organized in our family, so she likes to use tools that makes life easier. Um, since you're just on logistics of the table and chairs, sorry, Doug, uh, the, is there anything we need to do because of like the immediate turnover with pride vendoring as well too? Um, so you'll have the table and chairs, you know, help with that on Friday, but I'm just curious if there's anything we can help you with, Stephanie, in like getting it again on the Saturday. Yeah, I'll have to go back and look at the pride vendor form. Okay. I don't recall if tables and chairs are included or not. I don't think they I are. I don't recall them providing. You don't think so? Mm -mm. Okay, so. Um. No. <laughs> well, we can always bring it back in the office here, live in front of the police department, <laughs> and the next person can get it. Well, that, that would work, too. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so maybe we can just stay in contact. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I can help also on Pride. Pride? Okay. Awesome. Yeah. I could do part of Pride. I, again, like Mark, I have competing yeah. priorities with our alumni group. Um, but yes, I could. I will be there so I can come over and do the table for a couple hours. Yeah, if it's at 12 to 5, yeah. mm -hmm. we, you, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. break it up in <laughs> shift. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Doug, do you just want to text us if there's like a time that works better for you than others? And we can just coordinate closer to you if we're doing it in shifts. Yeah, that would be great. Okay. I can coordinate that and let you know which times. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Uh, I'm, I'm just glad that this year we'll be able to staff both because last year we didn't have enough uh, volunteers, so we did not staff pride. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. so. You know, one of the things that I think is thrilling, though, is the way the town turns out for Pride. Yeah. Yes. There are so many boos, so many, and like the congregations, yes. and the faith communities find a way to be there in many and various ways. I think last year we had the most faith group out there, and it was, it was just awesome mm -hmm. to see. Absolutely. All right, great. So we've got folks there for those vendor opportunities, and we'll be in touch on the details. Perfect. Awesome. All right, agenda item 11, staff announcements. Stephanie? I was just mentioning uh, prior to the meeting with Roger and Doug whether or not um, you wanted to hold a June meeting or not. I didn't hear that. Whether to hold the June meeting or not. Stephanie will be out of town. She'll be on vacation. And so. I can have Kristen staff. Mm -hmm. But the question is if, if you want to hold one. And I think Roger had spoken about the events that the commission will be either sponsoring or participating in in June. And so whether or not because of those um, community outreach <coughs> and education sessions and vendor spots the commission will be doing if you want to meet back up in July. Mm -hmm. But it's totally up to you because like I said, Kristen has staffed the commission and Kent staffed the commission. Um, you know, I'm fine with uh, tabling June meeting because we have two events that we have commissioned out there. Yeah. And if you guys also do yeah. that other things, then um, I'm always try to be conscious as of uh, people's volunteer time. So. But if we have, you know, really matter that need to be addressed, we can always call. Yeah, I'll leave it on my calendar, but I, not being here is okay with me because I will find you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the only other thing I think is, you know, kind of the um, the transit commission, yeah. you know, work. If we wanted you know, to, if we were okay with leaving that until July, or you know, or if we wanted to make sure we bring sure. that well, up. We can do that as well, a subcommittee. Yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking. Subcommittee. We could, we could do. Mm -hmm. We could do our subcommittee. I am here available, so we the subcommittee could meet and work on okay, that. Okay, and we can work on that instead. Okay. I had a question for you, Stephanie. In the olden days, <laughs> the commission in Dubuque, we had a quasi-judicial um, facet. I don't think that's here. Is that correct? No, you you do. That's only after a public hearing. So, and uh, rarely does it go that far. Usually it's not going to go that and, far. But, mm -hmm. So you're taking care of the, rec the conciliations and those kinds of Correct. 
Got Correct. It, and then if it goes to a public hearing, the commission has the ability to agree with the administrative law judge and or not agree and give the remedy or result that they want. Thanks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so are we? That's what happens when you're old. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so are we in agreement, no meeting in June then? Mm -hmm. I am in agreement. Okay. Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. And if something should come up, it's it's technically, you know, it if there if there's no agenda posted, then it would just be something on the website so people know not to come. But yeah. but an agenda can always be posted. That's not a just you know, so Okay. Can right. play it so, by ear too. Yeah. So for right now we'll plan on no meeting in June, but if you know, if yeah. occasion arises then we can bring that back. Well, enjoy your yeah. Fake it or Thank stake you. it. Yes. Thank Just you. make sure you don't contact Stephanie. <laughs> <laughs> she needs to be cut off from the, mm -hmm. yeah. I don't think it will the come. city. <laughs> I don't think it, well, Stephanie, ha happy early vacation to you. Well Thank earned you. and deserved. Thank you. Um, I don't think it will come up, but just for the sake of quorum, I also will be on vacation that week. Okay. Um, so I can't make it even if you do call a meeting to work. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> John V, were you going to say something? No, I was just going to ask, do we need something for the, I mean, do we need the meeting for the transit or can we go ahead without? I think the three of us can put something together and then we yeah. can report back in July. Okay. And if we need approval from the full commission, we can do it in July. It. But Thank that you. gives us a little extra time for the three of us to put something yeah, together. That's, that's good. Okay. Thank you. And, and I told Jeremy I would send the, the three emails to him. He just has that generic group yeah. human rights email but i said i would send the three personal emails Great. so that yeah awesome okay perfect is address still that dude address do you have a objection i do not know everything sounds great to me <laughs> <laughs> good All right. okay okay then agenda item 12 commissioner announcements commissioners shall not engage in discussion with one another concerning said announcements Anyone like to start? I'll start. Okay. Um, I had the the honor to attend the open house for the right house of fashion. Uh, it was so great, and it was um, so inspiring to to learn about the the way the idea has started, and then the opportunity <laughs> to create. Well, I'll say, yeah, right house of fashion. Um, <laughs> To see just a dream come true and that we're able to support that that process. But it's also a beautiful way to really see diversity and inclusion alive in the community, the community classroom. So there's tons of summer classes um, open to use of all ages. Um, and just, just really doing a shout out to what is being uh, offered now and to support that. It was a, uh, so if you have a chance, you know, we'll pop in. Yes. That's all I have. All right, thank you. I can go. Well, first, I want to give credit to Stephanie again for the Youth Award. That was another yes. successful <laughs> event. Uh, I know there's probably a lot of work goes behind the scene that we don't see. We just show up and there's good food and we eat <laughs> and we celebrate <laughs> our youth so always. Uh, thank you for all that you do. And uh, second, I had the privilege of attending the the Congolese community of Iowa. They merged the Johnson County and Lynn County group together. And they had the first ever uh, Mother's Conference uh, last Sunday. And uh, it was, the theme was challenges, you know, how to, uh, challenges that mothers do face balancing work and family at the same time being an immigrant, mm. <laughs> which, which uh, uh, it, it was great. And, uh, and they had a couple speaker, uh, one from the University of Iowa Hospital and Clinic, and they had one from the University of Iowa, the college part, and uh, they had one from the Iowa City Community School District, and I represented the Iowa Department of Health and Human Services just to talk to a lot of those uh, people that were there was not just mother, it was father as well, just answering mm -hmm. questions, things that we take for granted, we just know. Mm -hmm. But, you know, uh, many of our immigrant community really don't know. 
So it was it was a great event, and um, I was so glad that I was invited to be part of that. So I am, you know, Congolese born, but I live in here in the United States uh, twice as long as I live in Congo. So sometimes I don't connect very well. So it was just great to go back and hear some of this struggle happening within the community, and you can be at the point that you say, say, oh, you can go here, here's connection and things like that, so it was great. Thank you. As far as, you know, and one of the things that I, I was telling the, 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 the community too, I said, we don't have to reinvent the real, we don't have to create everything from the start. Mm -hmm. There's so many organizations that the city have, I'm inviting, I'm, you know, reminding ourselves to invite a lot of our immigrant group to join commission, board, you know, school, PTA, and group like that. So to really reach out, if you know of, you know, immigrant community, invite them to those things. This is the things that they need really to know, to learn the culture that we have here, and also to learn their culture. So as a human rights commission, we should always think about how can we reach out to a lot of those immigrant group that we have out there, so. Mm. I got stuff. This side of the table? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know I believe in the arts and how they speak, so seeing the movie Civil War, maybe you've mm -hmm. heard about it, mm -hmm. talks about what would happen if um, the government took control of the nation and groups that were, it was just a very um, rated R because of the violence, what would happen with guns in the, on the streets, and everybody pretending everything's normal, knowing full well that um, enough said. It, it, it brings an important point about um, what would happen when democracy's gone. I saw the um, opera Fierce at Hancher, and I bring that to your attention, maybe some of you did. What happened is that it was a University of Iowa graduate that wrote it. It was a debut performance. The, all the singers were Iowa students. Um, if you haven't been to opera before, the, the script is up on the, above the stage so you can see what they're saying. But it was talking about women becoming themselves and identifying the boxes that people were putting them in and like how they would dress and how they would behave and how they, they're fierce to break out of it. And it was a, a very, very important statement, I thought. Um, I'm no longer working with the Johnson County um, Heart Safe Community Campaign because if you come into town, you can see the signs that we are heart safe. I've been on that group for five years. I've distributed 51 AEDs, arranged for 2,000 people to get CPR training. I just couldn't continue. The group is continuing. But when you see a yellow box on a telephone pole, I help to do that. Fiona Johnson, the county director of the ambulance service, is phenomenal. Um, I'm on the Common Future Committee for Rotary. That is the DEI new name, Common Future, and I'm excited that we're in, we got a truck for the Pride Parade, and the Rotary groups are coming together to be in um, the Pride Parade. Um, I'm a member of the Consultation of Religious Communities, and I'm working with Ryan Downing, the pastor at Faith UCC, to get Rob Reiner's film, God and Country, shown at Film Scene. Um, it addresses Christian nationalism. I want to get in the way of it. It's a problem. Uh, I think the movie will help. I've talked to Connie Ryan at Interfaith Alliance out of Des Moines that she might be here to introduce the film and lead conversations. Um, I'm also I'm just an old retired pastor that meets with the seven reverends every four, Tuesday at 4 o'clock, and we invited uh, Steve Dressler from Iowa Legal Aid to meet with us and tell us what Iowa Legal Aid does we had no idea this is really an extraordinary resource for people if they need help. Um, I heard great Nancy Bird talk about Greater Iowa City. Maybe some of you know about that. What an extraordinary thing and such a conscientious sensitivity to who we are as a diverse community and how we can help uh, new residents get businesses, get jobs. Um, Nancy's exceptional leader. She spent two years in the Peace Corps. She, I mean, she's really got a heart for this. And finally, I want you to know that in 1948, 
the Lutheran World Federation established Augusta Victoria Hospital on uh, the Mount of Olives, just east of Jerusalem, to take care of Palestinian refugees and wounded because of what had happened to Palestine when their land was taken. And now we're still having to battle with that. There's over 500 professional staff at Augusta um, Hospital. They're continuing to work. Um, um, enough said, I'll start to cry. It's, it's important. Um, I'm so glad that Ireland recognized Palestine as a nation. It will be good when the United States does. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mark. I think I'm gonna go next. Um, I'm Palestinian, so it hits me hard, you know, and still we are burdened, we're shattered. We're broken apart, but we are resilient at the same time. Like it hasn't been easy at all, especially in the past few days when they are charcoaling people in Rafah. You know, this is a safe zone for them. They, they promise that if they move from the north to the south to UNRWA schools and shelters, they will not do anything to them. It's just, you know, cowardly action by colonizers that they just, you know, um, they bomb their tents, they burn them alive. You can see the images of beheaded babies. You can see the image of charcoal, you know, mothers and fathers and children. And they said that, you know, Netanyahu came and he said that the first, you know, it was a mistake. Maybe, you know, we have to investigate this, but then, you know, what happened is they did it again. Mm -hmm. So when they know how to do precise, you know, targets and all of a sudden they do this, this is intentional and the mission was made clear. They wanna just ethnic cleanse Gaza. So we are not the same people after October 7th. We are not the same people since 1948 or even before that when they just established this state on the bloodshed of our people. Just a few updates. Uh, we showed the real bad Arabs, how, you know, how Hollywood vilifies people, and that you know, relates to what we go through as, as minorities, as Arabs, as Muslims, as Christian Arabs too, that you know, it embedded within everything that we see, everything we hear in the media, and this is how, you know, children and young people, they grew up to hate yep. Arabs and Muslims. And for us, you know, just to bring, a sh to shed a light on that, you know, how, how, it, how it, it came to be such a thing, you know, like to, to, to build a bigotry toward, you know, uh, the most, you know, peaceful people on earth. If our greeting says, peace be upon you. So if our smile is a charity is rewarded by God. And, but what you see is totally contradicting to us. So I'm glad that, you know, Mark Priest, you know, and his wife, you know, they showed up. It was really an honor. I think we can put that link in the minutes, the YouTube link to Real Arabs. No? Okay. No. But it's good, you know, it's called Real Bad Arabs. If you, you know, how Hollywood qualifies the people, if people are interested, they can find it on YouTube. Um, it just, you know, I, since years ago, I've been recommending to schools, you know, even staff members, even educators to watch it because sometimes they are the one who's spending eight hours with those young children and giving them, you know, the worst pictures about us, you know. So if we educate the adults first, maybe it can help, you know, with um, just with ending the stone of propaganda within the schools. Uh, something else we did, you know, um, as a social committee um, chair at the mosque. Um, I tried to help in doing the first event for mother connection session for our Muslim uh, mothers who are struggling to relate to what you said, you know. I think we share the same struggles, you know, being you know, from foreign countries and trying to raise our children in a Western world does not sometimes w where they are denied to practice who they are and to live, you know, without assimilation and without pressure to change themselves. So it was a successful event um, I was always in charge, and I love always to do this, um, provide so much activities for the little children, because all the mothers, they struggle yeah. to leave their children somewhere to attend such sessions and to connect with each other, to feel empowered, you know, to give them recognition for what they do and to share the struggle, you know, and sometimes that's why itself is empowering. So that was successful, and I'm looking so forward for many more events to come like that. Um, Something else is, uh, as Mariam Girls Club, we, uh, we took a plot from the Global, Fo Global Food Project, uh, the, the old name for it is uh, Poor Johnson County Farm. So now we participated with them, and Will Kevin did an awesome job, so hopefully we can you know, educate the girls about farming, about how to connect to earth, to the roots and things. 
and that's by itself, you know, it shows you how to grow up regardless of the weather, regardless of the climate, regardless of who's around you. So that's, uh, uh, you know, like a wholesome experience gonna be for them and I'm excited for that. Um, we participated through the Asian Fest too. And you know, it was lovely. And I think it grew bigger than last year. And I think by next year, I think it's gonna be even bigger than this time. Um, next, you know, hopefully next year, I'll do an early connection with, uh, we have in our community uh, from Japan, from Indonesia, from Korea, we have Muslims who lives here in Iowa City. And that's a good place for them to come and represent themselves as authentically from, you know, the far Asian countries where they can stand there and have their own booth or our table. But it was wonderful and my girls, they did uh, an awesome job with the glitter tattoos as usual. <laughs> mm. um, last thing I'm gonna share in here is about the Board of Education and my involvement within the schools. Um, on May 15th, it's the Nakba Day, the catastrophic days for the Palestinians. And um, I've been struggling, you know, to try to acknowledge our suffering as it's acknowledged for the Holocaust victims too, because that's mm -hmm. equivalent to us too. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they promised that's gonna be on the quarterly newsletters and everything, and I was shocked that it was not mm -hmm. after they confirmed. And that by itself, you know, um, it just, you know, prompted me to go look again if my um, request of diversing the libraries within the school system was done or not. And still, nothing was done. Like, yes, I see a few books, but some of them, I donated those books before. Some of them, other people donated those books. So it wasn't, you know, not much um, have been done since two years ago. And that was not starting October 7th of last year, because I donated books and I talked to them about this more than two years ago. But hopefully, you know, I received an email um, and hopefully I'm always trying to give the benefits of the doubts and to be optimistic. So hopefully we're gonna keep working with them until, you know, um, we work our differences and we try to end this political propaganda from the schools and empower, you know, empowering our children is an awesome thing. And as a human rights commissioner, it, it pains me so much to go to those board meetings, try to advocate for the living ones when I'm grieving the dead ones. Mm. So, thank you. When were you last <coughs> in Palestine? I went last, last summer. Mm -hmm. uh, after 11 years of not going there. And I came back and this is what happened. So. so I could go next because I actually wanna pick up on what you just said about, um, you know, one of the things um, genocide scholars will talk about is how perpetrators use the projection of identity. Um, and so it's not really what you yourself hold as one of your identities necessarily, but more about how a perpetrator of violence would like to weaponize a certain identity group um, and monolithically collect people within that category. And so I think, you know, when we're thinking about um, uh, like some of the points you raised, I think the remembering that people have whole lives, who they were before, who they are at present, and who they hopefully will be in the future. None of us are monoliths. We all have multiple identities that we hold at any given point in time, and no one should be subject to that level of violence ever, um, the threat thereof. So, uh, you know, I just want to kind of um, raise that, uh, and I'm grateful for your voice as well as yours too, Mark. The, um, you know, kind of transitioning slightly, the, I think the scars are, are held by communities. The scars sometimes are also held by like our actual physical locations in many cases, right? And I think we'll see that um, in Gaza for some time, but the healing can also be held in nature and the environment. And that can also, we've seen in studies uh, support us too. And so on a very, very different point <laughs> than what I typically raise, I wanted to share with you all that I was privileged to do a little bit of a hike with the Burr Oak Land Trust at one of their private reserves um, last week. And actually it'll be open to the public um, this is the Coriel Nature Preserve, um, and they're typically, they won't be open for large public events for a long time, but um, on the weekend of June 14th, if you don't have anything else going on in your <laughs> calendar, <laughs> they are having, um, mm. apparently the prickly pear cactus is native to Iowa. Oh, and um, the Coriel Preserve, which is um, run by the Burr Oak Land Trust, they will be having um, kind of an opening weekend to see the blooms. Mm of uh, prickly pear cacti that they have on site. Um, so if you, or you and your families wanna get out, I can send you the link to register. Um, it's a totally free event. Um, and it is a little bit of a drive um, on the Cedar River, but um, worth it, well worth it. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad you brought that up because now there's a law in Iowa where people can't donate land to land trusts. Oh, that's new to me. It was last year. 
Oh, I see you from here too. But Borough Glen, so that's a great group of people. Yeah. Yes. Charlie, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't have a lot to say. I was winding up my semester and decided to take it slow. So just participated in this project called Project Hope, which is led by a professor in my department, Dr. Saba Ali. Uh, she calls, I mean, she has all the high school or eighth grade to 12th grade targets that population and shows them in Iowa City from different schools, um, not just Iowa City, actually across um, like West Liberty, North Liberty, and just brings those students here and then organizes workshops within the university, so partners with different groups and shows them what different kinds of futures you could be having. And a lot of those children are from diverse backgrounds, have first generation parents. So I led a workshop on mental health, careers in mental health, and also diverse cultural ways of dealing with mental health. So that was a lot of fun because we have such an amazing diversity in Iowa City. I think we have more opportunities to talk about how how do you deal with mental health. It doesn't have to be the westernized form of therapy, but it could be other ways. And so, yeah, I think that's all I did. I just awesome. haven't done anything else. That's great. Uh, Idris, do you have any announcements? Uh, yeah, similar to Janavi, I don't have too much to say. Um, yeah, this no understanding that uh, classes have uh, recently wind down. Uh, I know a lot of people that have recently graduated, and you know a lot of people were very happy with graduating. You know, finishing off college, finishing off high school. Uh, recently, there was a, a graduation. Um, my little sister and my cousin actually just graduated from uh, Theodore Roosevelt High School in Des Moines, and although it was supposed to be a uh, very enjoyable evening, there was a shooting at the end. Which uh, you know, unfortunately, you know, um, unfortunately, it kind of ended the end of the events, and uh, a lot had to, a lot of uh, a lot had to happen. Cops were involved, and so on and so forth. And the reason I kind of bring this up is because this is something I feel like, as human rights commissioners, we should definitely like look into, or at least uh, at least we should create awareness for this, so that that way it's taken seriously. This is not something that happens often. It's not something that happens at every graduation, or even you know a handful of graduations, but it does happen. And you know, just this past weekend, it happened. And uh, figuring out a solution for this is uh, is definitely definitely like a. I guess it's definitely of high importance and high priority, I feel. Uh, but yeah, you know, just winding winding down school uh, semester ended. Um, so far, uh, as for my company, we've recently partnered with the uh, Multicultural Development Center of Iowa. So we are working with them in a warehouse space to kind of uh, create a collection space where people can kind of toss or uh, we can collect the uh, plastic material or materials that they're trying to recycle and we will purpose it ourselves for them. So we're very close into creating that process or um, creating the uh, repurposing system. Um, but yeah, besides besides that, you know, classes ending and uh, our machinery and warehouse or partnership with the MDC, I feel like that's about it. All right, thanks. Um, for mine, I have, um, thanks to the, the city, I will be attending the gala for One Iowa on um, Friday the 14th. So while <laughs> you all are at Juneteenth, I, I'm unfortunately going to miss that event, which I was hoping to get to. But no, um, so yeah, I will be in Des Moines um, at that event, um, yep. you know, One Iowa's. It was, uh, it's probably the largest advocacy, um, LGBTQ adv advocacy group in the state. Uh, was founded in 2005 yeah. to fight for marriage equality and has mm -hmm. continued on advocating for the rights of gay, lesbian, and trans individuals mm -hmm. in the state. So very excited to be able to go to that fundraising gala um, and celebrate pride there. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, I don't know if I, if we, talked about this before or not, but I did kind of want to talk, we've talked before about the Regents universities and their DEI kind of requirements and their, you know, the recommendations and directives to reduce those mm -hmm. efforts. Um, I do just want to say that, you know, they, the universities, I think it was in March or April, um, announced how they were going to implement those. And 
the University of Iowa is centralizing some things, renaming a few things, but m for the most part, the th all programs and things are staying in place at Iowa. Um, the only thing that is getting cut are f positions that are already unfilled. Yeah. The University of Northern Iowa and Iowa State University shut down their entire DEI offices and programs. Um, so I just, one, just kind of wanted to publicly say that and that, you know, we are very fortunate to live in Iowa City and have a university that is willing to stand up and support those values, not just in word, but also in, in action. And comparing that to the other two universities really stands out. So just to commend the administration um, and the folks at the university who worked really hard to make sure that that, that happened. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. yeah, the president's we'll statement that. was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. And with that, um, I'll take a motion to adjourn. I'll second that. All right. All those in favor of adjourning? Aye. 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 All right. Opposed? All right. Hey, we are adjourned. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you.